So what's the answer to part E? Um, I don't think I've gotten there yet. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. We're not there yet. Yeah. Good. We made a mistake. I'm trying to find where that is. No, you got 25 newtons? Mm -hmm. That's the right answer. Oh, okay. Um, yep, that's fine. All right, very good. So over here you've got the hinge force Y. Um, so M was 10. And G, we can approximate, is 10. And we just found our acceleration, which is negative 3 quarters times G, which is 10. So what was our answer for part E? Now, in this case, I didn't put any dots on top of F, because I wasn't, uh, maybe I'm not quite sure what direction the hinge force is in. So that the fact that there's no dot indicates I'm going to let the math tell me what direction it's in. Well, that came out to be positive, which kind of makes sense because it's bouncing out the weight so much. So much. Okay. Good. Then we're ready for part F. So your sign didn't quite come out right, mm -hmm. but you knew that it's supposed to be positive, so you fixed it. Okay, good. Now, from my perspective, the easiest equation here is to use is this one, because this is the equation you already solved for alpha. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the equation that you already solved for alpha. Okay. So we could plug into here. We get alpha equals, now there's a negative sign in here. And then we plug in for, uh, for a sub y. And what should I plug in for a sub y? Um, negative 3.2. So notice we have two negative signs that cancel. What went wrong in your equation is you only had one negative sign. So maybe you put in the negative sign from a sub y, but you forgot that the equation itself had a negative sign. Mm -hmm. um, so the equation already has a negative sign, and a sub y is negative, so those two negatives are going to cancel. So we get negative 3 halves, and L was 1, right? Mm -hmm. So that's gone, and G we can approximate as 10. Oops, so the negative sign is gone. So we ended up with what answer? Um, 15 newtons. What would be the units on that? Newtons. Oh. <laughs> um, it's angular acceleration. That Standard SI units for angular acceleration are radians per second squared. Radians are a kind of disappearing unit, so in the answer key, they left those out and just put in a 1. Mm -hmm. But I think it makes more sense to call that radians per second squared. All right, well, if you're learning here one of the most important tricks, which is when you have both a translational acceleration and a rotational acceleration, you can use this equation to get rid of the one of the variables. But you got to be careful to put in the sign yourself, because this is only about magnitudes. Now, there was one little bit of a tricky thing here that we should show what we're actually doing in this case. The thing that makes an extended body dip more tricky here is that different parts of it are accelerating at different rates. This part over here is going to be accelerating faster than this part over here, and of course, the hinge is not accelerating at all. So whose acceleration are we supposed to put into this equation? Which point along here, whose acceleration do we put in if all of them are going to have a different translational acceleration? Um, the center of mass. That's good. So it turns out that when you have an extended body and different points in it are accelerating at different, at different rates, when you're using Newton's second law for translation, you, uh, you say that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. Where did we use that? Well, we used that over here. So the acceleration that we're trying to find from alpha is the acceleration of the center of mass. And that's why you know how to put in L over 2. Because how far is L over 2 from the pivot? How far is the, the center of mass from the pivot? Well, it's half of the length. Um, you were assuming that all along. After all, not every point is at L over 2. This point isn't much further than L over 2, and this point is much less. So all along, we must have been assuming that the acceleration we were focusing on is the acceleration of the center of mass. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what distance to plug in here. Mm -hmm. But other than that technical detail, um, that your procedure here uh, was really good. This, this is a really hard uh, step. Uh, I think very few students would ever actually uh, get this right. Most students wouldn't think to use this equation, and the ones that do won't get the signs right. Good.